Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Mark III Hypersonic Systems, which is being made by forum user Nestor D. and what this glorious little piece of work is looking to add into the game is a new selection of parts so that you can build more Mark III space planes, and I just love that. Even though I'm not good with space planes, I do love building building them because they're always just so much fun to build. You can really make some cool, intricate things. And one of the things that's always kind of been odd to me is the Mark II space planes are what get all the love in the modding community. You don't see a whole lot of parts for the Mark III hull setup. And so I just could not pass up this mod when I saw it on the forums because, well, it's one of the few out there adding to the Mark III part selection, and that just makes me happy. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and take a look at what all we have on offer. Now, instead of grabbing our usual Mark I command pod, we are actually going to grab the Mark III cockpit today. As well, of course, this is your base standard cockpit for the Mark III system. This is what you'll typically build off uh, your various Mark III space planes of. And I think this is kind of one of the big limiting factors why we don't have a lot of Mark III space plane parts. Is because our only cockpit for it, at least in vanilla, is essentially a space shuttle cockpit. Which, I mean, it's fun and it's usable, usable to make, you know, different uh, space shuttle setups. But it's, it's not really that great for making, like, say, a single stage to orbit space plane. But now, thanks to the Mark III Hypersonic Systems mod, we have a new Mark III cockpit available here, which is, of course, just the Mark III Hypersonic cockpit, which, if we grab this, you can see is, oh boy, about twice, ooh, boy, actually, probably two and a half times the length of the standard Mark III cockpit, and is much more aerodynamic, much more pointy, and overall just quite nice. I, I really do like the look of this cockpit. It's a very, very cool looking, unique canopy to it, much different than any of the other existing canopies in stock. Very cool design with the pointed nose to it, but still being a little bit wide and flat, almost like a duck bill. Very, very cool indeed. I do enjoy it. Now, it is a you know pretty standard command pod, though. Minimum of one crew, of course. Reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, and monopropellant. Uh, we do also have some lift surface rating on this of 0.6, and it does hold a total crew capacity of five Kerbals. Very cool indeed. Now, as for the IVA on this, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's technically not finished, but they decided to throw in their own placeholder, which I actually kind of think is cool. Because a lot of mod makers, whenever they make their own cockpits, they just throw a sort of standard IVA from one of the other base vanilla cockpits into theirs for the time being, just until they can make their own. The Mark III hypersonic cockpit, though, is different, because it's the base of what you think the cockpit may look like in the future. It's very kind of poorly made at the moment, because it's basically a rough sketch of an idea to show you this is kind of what it'll look like when it's finished. And I actually like that idea. Even though it doesn't look that great now, you can see the potential in it, which will, of course, show it off later. Now, for the next parts we're going to look at, normally I go through all the tabs, and it's kind of annoying because, well, you have to remember where everything is in all these parts. But thankfully, Nestor D actually took advantage of the manufacturer tab. I... Oh boy, this is one of the things that kind of bothers me about the mod community. I love them to death, but they seem to forget that there's this lovely manufacturer tab that can allow you to easily sort your parts in here. So we have the N5 Aerodynamics and Space Manufacturer tab here with all seven of our lovely new parts for the Mark III Hypersonic Systems. So of course, we've already gone through the cockpit, which is quite nice and lovely. So the next part we'll look at is actually a fuel tank, the N5 liquid fuel tank. And this is a 2.5 meter radius tank, which is sort of made to go on like the wings, things like that, radially attached to your wings or to the side of the ship, etc. Uh, very sleek model to it, not exactly the greatest of texturing, I wish it would be a bit, uh, 
well, let's just say a bit more textured. It'd be nice for it to be a bit more stock alike. But the cool thing about it, it does have multiple tank setups. So when you first pop it on, it's an empty tank setup. It's just dry mass. That's it. Uh, then we have the liquid fuel setup where it holds 8,500 liquid fuel. You then have a liquid fuel and oxidizer setup, which has a 38 to 25 liquid fuel and 4675 oxidizer. And then you're back to the dry mass. So it's quite cool to have that. So if you're just going to go for the space plane engines, yeah, you'll just need the liquid fuel. If you're going to have a rocket on the back of it, liquid fuel and oxidizer, always good to have the options. I do enjoy that. And uh, it is quite nice in a large, a fairly, uh, well, fairly nice-sized fuel tank to it. I quite like it for its usability. Again, though, texturing could definitely use some work. Now, if we turn over to the other side, we'll look at some, uh, shall we say, aesthetic parts that also do actually have some use to them. They are, uh, they do count as lift surfaces, and that is these Mark III edge root extensions and the Mark III lifting body edge. Now these are made so you can sort of put them on the side of the ship to add a bit more detailing, make the ship look a bit more sleek, of course. If we say uh, drag, it, drag it back a bit so it lines up a bit better. Very nice, just uh, to add a nice point to your ship, and we have them in both the edge and the sort of regular side of variety. And each of them does also have a lift rating. Now the Mark III Edge is, or has rather, a lift rating of 3.3 and does also hold 90 liquid fuel. Now the regular Body Edge has a lift rating of 2.7 and holds 150 liquid fuel, which I think is quite cool because it just gives you another option to uh, actually have liquid fuel, another place to put it. And of course, you do have the option for crossfeed on or off, so uh, always nice to have that. Now the next bit, which would also be in aerodynamics, you have two different ram air intakes. Now the first one is a radial ram air intake, which uh, you know fits in nicely with the design of the edges here. Uh, but of course, does have a nice triangular opening so that you can get some air right on into the uh, ship there. Also has the option to cross feed on, off, etc. And oh god, which of these was it? This one here, its air intake has a air intake rating of uh, 1.3. And so a very good amount of air coming into this ram intake. Now the other is a shock cone intake, which is meant to be put on, say, like the edges or the ends of one of these tanks. And this shock cone intake, if we just pop it onto there, nice little, uh, nice little pretty standard intake. Very cool indeed. And it, of course, has an intake air amount of 3.2. Very nice, very useful. Now, the next and also last part that we have to look at is the only engine included in the mod at the moment. They do plan on adding in another engine in the future, but right now we have the Wavern Hybrid Turbofan Ramjet, which is quite a cool engine, has alternator, gimbling, electric charge, all that sort of jazz, and uh, has a pretty good thrust at 2891, max thrust, stationary of 490, engine ISP of 3500 atmospheric, 3500 vacuum, so it'll work about the same either way, though of course it does require air intake, so it's not really gonna work in vacuum all too well. Now as for its fuel consumption, it'll use a 2.85 liquid fuel per second and 19.986 air intake intake per second, flame out under 10%. A very cool little engine. Let's just pop this baby onto the end there. A nice little design, kind of um, cavernous in how it looks right here. It just kind of, I don't know, just kind of stops. It's a little weird. Uh, uh, certainly one thing that's shared with all these parts is they definitely could use some more texturing work done to them. But overall, I do enjoy the modeling, especially on this cockpit here. It could just use a little bit of help on the uh, texturing end. But a uh, fun thing with this engine, it does have its own uh, particle effect, which is nice. Again, also does need a little bit of work. I'll show you why in a moment when we jump into one of these planes. Uh, but overall, very, very cool little setup. Now, at the moment, like I said, seven parts. They do hope to add a variety of parts in the future, including two different hypersonic 
drone cores, uh, a new aerospike engine, a scramjet engine, and potential for other parts in the future, so I cannot wait for those. But let's actually take a look at what you can do with one of these ships. The mod maker was kind enough to include a uh, space plane file here, so let's just open up the OSP Mark IV Phoenix and look at this baby in all of its glory. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous looking airplane, which is of course single stage to orbit capable, uh, maybe not with my piloting, but if you are a good pilot, the combination of engines and of course the rocket engine here should be able to get you into space quite nicely. So let's just go and launch this on the runway and uh, yeah, we'll finish it up there by taking a look at how it flies. Though of course, I mean, with between the wings and all of these edge bodies with their lift rating should be pretty good. Now if I remember the action groups, one will turn on the jet engines, two will turn on the uh, rocket engine there. So let's turn on our SAS, set our uh, controls over here to fine tune, and hit one to start up the jet engines. And away we go. Now there are those custom particle effects I mentioned. They look quite good when you're sort of from the back angle. But if you go to the sides, you'll notice we get these uh, little circles at the back of the particle effect. It's kind of kind of odd. It kind of takes it out a little bit for me. It just makes it look a bit strange. Now, from the rear, it is quite a cool little particle effect. A bit different from a lot of our typical jet engines that we have. But yeah, from the sides, it's... Ooh, it's a little strange. It's a little strange. But overall, the sound, pretty standard for any and all of our different jet engines that we have. I should probably pull up. Oh boy, there we go, and let's bring up the gears, okay. <laughs> this baby does require that whole stretch of runway, so, because, uh, well, it is quite large. Now, I just, uh, I love seeing this, or these, oh god, I did not mean to turn on that engine, I meant to turn off my UI. There we go, good to hit the right buttons. I absolutely love the look of these parts, especially that glorious cockpit. It's just, it's gorgeous. Look at that sleekness to it. It it really fits with the whole concept of this being sort of a hypersonic engine or parts pack with the, uh, hopefully, the soon-to-come aerospike and scramjet engines, which would be quite cool. I also realized just now I probably should have looked at the IVA when we were on the ground, but what the hell, internal view. And this is what I meant by a placeholder IVA, just to give you an idea of what this will look like in the future. You've got the... Uh, a nice little, god, I don't even know what you would call these, the slats on the canopy that you can peer through. Uh, you can see where the parts will go. The hope for the IVA in the future is for it to be RPM or roster prop monitor compatible, so it'll be nice to have a glass cockpit up in here. But very cool, very cool indeed. I do quite enjoy this idea of a placeholder cockpit just to sort of show you what it'll be like in the future. So if we go out and actually head back to uh, Valentina, you can see that she's in the back. Again, it is a five-person cockpit, so we got three up there at the front and then two of these seats in the back. So you can see it'll be quite a large plane once we do have the full IVA finished up in the future. And so you'll probably get some like uh, doors back there, etc., some nice equipment, another seat behind us. Very cool indeed. But yes, a very, very fun mod. I am definitely enjoying it so far. You can make some really beautiful airplanes with these parts. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you would like to check it out for yourself, you can download it from the link in the description as always. And I definitely do hope you give it a try as it's just nice to have more parts in the game to build stuff with, and especially with the Mark III, because as I said earlier, it just really hasn't gotten the love that I think it deserves, This these nice big Mark III parts. So, if you make anything fun with this mod, and I hope you do, you can, I would love to, uh, to ask, oh my god, I am flubbing my ending here. I would love to see a picture of it, so tweet it to me if you make a cool aircraft. I would just be overjoyed to see what you guys can build, because so far, I've been having fun with it, but oh boy, I've been running into some creative roadblocks with making my own planes. But yes, hopefully you'll have more creative luck. And I hope you do enjoy this mod, and of course that you have enjoyed this episode, and that you hopefully come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.